exhibits that we have put in by stipulation. I'm gonna, so they're now in evidence. I don't think that the court needs to address those. There's, since we are on the verge of closing, there are there's one um, composite exhibit that the state is going to just review momentarily that, and then not have an objection. That would be the last one that's going to be entered in by stipulation. So that would be composite exhibit 30? Yes, I, yes, it's just, it's one, it's only one document. It's just seven feet long. And it's a oh, composite. okay. What is it? It is a timeline. Okay, defense timeline. Okay, Mr. Your Honor, we, we just want to verify some of the times on there and take us a little while, but sure. I'm told other than that, we won't have an objection, assuming it's accurate. I'm not saying that it isn't. We just want to be able to have some time to verify that. There are only two other slightly loose end. I'm sorry. Whoever wants to speak first. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, while you're out, I didn't know what you stipulated to. They had not made mark. And then those items contained item 30, so we were already up to item 30. And the next one would have been 39 for the time one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand what you just said. They had me mark them for exhibits, and then they stipulated to them to be entered into evidence and had me mark them for evidence. So I marked them items 30 through 38. Okay. I don't understand what you're saying they are because what Mr. O'Mara showed me is a long defense. line. I'm sorry, if I might. These are now in evidence as 30 through 38. Okay. okay. And we'll identify those for your list. You want me to go through them? I do. Okay. 30 um, being? Give me. Um, okay. It's going to be on the bottom. All right, I'll take care of it. 30, Your Honor, is um, a picture of the back of Mr. Zimmerman's head. 31. 31 is the front of Mr. Zimmerman's head. Okay. 32 is still photograph of Mr. Martin in 711. 33, um, a picture of Mr. Martin's pants. 34, a second still of Mrs. Mr. Martin at the 711. 34. Five, a um, aerial view of the retreat at Twin Circle, Twin Lakes, I'm sorry, um, area of inquiry. 36 is a larger aerial photograph of the entire area of that portion of Sanford. 37 is a large aerial of retreat at Twin Lakes. And then 38 is a medical investi uh, ME investigator's picture of the scene. Then if, it, if admitted, then 39 would be the timeline we talked about. There are two other um, loose ends. One is what we talked about with the judicial notice of the weather. We come up with a more accurate one for the 26th that's going to be substituted, and that's close to me but not in my hands, and I'll get that to you as soon as I can. Is that stipulated as the substitution for State's Exhibit 213? Yes. Okay, so as soon as you get it, Trish, will you allow that to be substituted for the one you have? Right. And the next one would be the same exact type of exhibit for the 27th of February. That's correct. Do you want that as composite at st States 213, or do you want the other one? We planned them as separate so that we would not mess up the clerk, so the okay. substitution would be for so the 26th. So we'll substitute um, 213 uh, for the new one, and we'll make the second one for the February 27th, Defense Exhibit 40. Yes, Your And, uh, Your Honor, the only other one was that w there is an exhibit that, in order to move matters along when Ms. Gentile was being questioned, we used a very small portion of the um, CD to question her. And we acknowledged to the court that we would present to the court that as its own, um, just redaction of its own one portion of it. So that hasn't been brought into evidence yet. That needs to be presented as well, because we use that, if you might recall, to refresh her recollection as to what she said. But we use the entire um, 
interview of her, which would not be appropriate to go back to the jury, just the one portion that was played. And we're going to get you that CD, and that's the last matter. My recollection is she was just able to either listen to it or something, but not in front of the jury. It wasn't played in front of the jury. The jury was. was sent out. Yes. And I said since she, it was an impeachment, so it wasn't played in front of the jury. I might just have a moment, Your Honor. Yes, you may. My understanding was that the part that, and I may just be wrong and I apologize, I understand that the part that was played was the um, portion of it that's where she said that could be Trayvon, that might be Trayvon, and those words, and I believe the jury was present. Okay, they weren't, but let's do, if we could get the court reporter's notes from the date that Ms. Gentel testified, it was two different dates, I believe, is it Defense Exhibit Double D? Is that how it was identified? Because I have that as a tape of Gentel interview with the state attorney's office. I believe office. it was, Your Honor. Is that DD? Yeah, it was not played in front of the jury, but we can verify it. Um, is there any way to get? Okay. It looks as though it looks as though there may be an issue. We will have some time between now and the time the jury would get it. We'll take care of fixing it and okay. letting you know. Okay. The only concern was that this is now in evidence as DD, and this not is not in evidence. It's identified. Oh, I'm sorry. So, we're good. so this is just marked. I apologize. It's I'm marked in. for identification purposes. Thank you. Okay. Were well, there well, any more of those house? Yet. The state has to look at it to confirm. And we'll be in it yeah. Any more housekeeping matters? Um, We'll get you the weather information. I think that's it. Okay, Mr. Zimmerman, please stand up. I'll remind you, sir, that you're still under oath from when we had you sworn in earlier before the break. Um, did you now have sufficient time to discuss with your attorneys whether or not you wanted to testify in this case? Yes, Your Honor. And I don't need to know what was said, but after those discussions, have you made a decision? Yes, Your Honor. And what is your decision, sir? A after consulting with counsel not to testify, Your Honor. Okay, you understand that no matter what counsel says to you, it's still your decision. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and I need to know, is it your decision to not testify in this case? Yes, Your Honor. And are you making that decision freely and voluntarily? Yes, Your Honor. Has anybody promised you anything to get you to make that decision? No, Your Honor. Has anybody threatened you? No, Your Honor. And this is clearly the decision that you yourself have made? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Is the defense going to rest subject to any more evidence being entered? In That's evidence? correct, Your Honor. Thank you. Is the state going to have rebuttal evidence? Testimony? Yes, Your Honor. And yeah. how many witnesses are you going to be calling for rebuttal? I have at least two today, um, and one who is not available today but should be available tomorrow, which we may not end up calling anyway. Okay, um, I still haven't seen the proposed jury instructions. It's my understanding that a copy has been provided to the defense and a copy has been provided to um, Mr. Zimmerman. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can I please have a copy? Uh, are these two witnesses going to be lengthy? I don't think so, Your Honor. Can we do a charge conference after we excuse the jury for the day? I don't see a reason we can. Um, we can start. We have some special jury instructions to prepare and present, but we can at least get a, a feel. I think might now be the time for my, me to renew my judgment of a criminal. Right, and then you'll rest in front of the jury and we'll go forward. Yes. Okay, you may proceed. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. No, I think with the length of the um, presentation to you earlier, I'm going to certainly abbreviate and, and not we address the arguments nor the case law that I address. I would certainly ask you to, to reconsider those. I think that the factual basis, however, has changed somewhat, and I'm not going to recount it because I know that you were sitting here along with us during the whole time of hearing it, but that the defense case has presented now evidence that I believe, um, uncontroverted evidence, that supports my client's contention that he acted in self-defense. That includes, of course, the most recent witness, Mr. Root, 
It includes um, Dr. DeMaio and his expert testimony in regard to the gunshot, and also the other information concerning the injuries that my client suffered. Um, we also have uh, a number of voice witnesses, if you will, those witnesses who have come back and uh, testified before this court that they had uh, no issue whatsoever and were quite firm in their position and belief and testimony under oath that it was my client who, who was screaming for help. Um, and again, I don't, I don't want to belabor the point of the previous case law, but I think that you would need to decide at this point basically that there is, um, that the state has excluded at this point in the trial uh, a reasonable, reasonable hypothesis of my client's innocent. And now with the strength of the defense presentation that they have failed to do so, and I would ask that the charges be dismissed in full. Response? <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. If anything, the state's position is that Dr. DeMaio certainly portrayed at least one alternative scenario where the defendant could absolutely have committed second-degree murder against Trayvon Martin, just by virtue of his answer to Mr. Delarionda's questions, that being that Mr. Martin was attempting to pull back or disengage when he was shot and murdered by this defendant. Um, moreover, to say that uh, Mr. Root's testimony was uncontroverted is, um, I think, overstretching it uh, even more than Mr. Root did. Um, certainly he was very eager to draw conclusions, but he also had to admit finally that he had absolutely no idea what exactly went on at the moment that this defendant shot and killed Trayvon Martin. So we believe that while the defense may have presented people uh, to sort of enhance the dispute of facts and the inferences that can be arisen, in other words, to make it perhaps even more disputed, that the state has certainly submitted sufficient evidence and will again continue to do so in rebuttal uh, to indicate that both the facts and the uh, inferences that can be drawn therefrom would support a jury verdict as to both murder and the lesser included manslaughter. Very brief response. I would just ask that either the state or perhaps the court, if you're going to rule, come up or identify the state's factual scenario, their theory of the case, anything for which there is that excludes a reasonable hypothesis of innocence of my client now that they finished their case and we've finished our case, I would ask that that be articulated in some form of fashion either by the state so that you can make the ruling or by the court in your ruling that actually suggests that legally uh, this judgment of acquittal should not be granted. Okay, thank you. Um, the court has sat here and listened to all the witnesses. I think I had previously said how many witnesses had testified both on behalf of the state and the defense um, and have listened to the arguments both at the end of the, clo the close of the state's case and now at the close of the defense case. And the court's decision is the same, that there is substantial evidence, both direct and circumstantial, circumstantial to allow this charge to go to the jury. Um, And then we have to, at some point in time, um, deal with um, the Mr. Donnelly issue. Um, so we could do that after we've talked about it. Who's the witness that you're going to call next? The first one will be Adam Pollock. Right. And can you tell us who the second one is going to be? David Lee. David Lee. Thank you. They had a third. They didn't know if, we they, didn't know if they were going to call that person tomorrow or not. I have to ascertain his certain availability, Your Honor. <coughs> I just haven't. When you find out tonight, would you please email the defense and let them know so they could be prepared for that in the morning? Yes, Your Honor. Thank and you. I know the state understands that they are bound in true rebuttal. Mr. Pollock testified before. I want to make certain this is not a, just a re-examination of him, but it is truly in rebuttal to some particular fact that we presented in our case. If it's not, you're free to object and then I'll rule. Yes, Your Honor. Are we ready to bring the jury in? The defense is ready. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you need to again rest on the record I'll do that. in front of the jury. I mean, please bring the jury in. And that would just take my announcement, correct? Yes. Thank you.
Please be seated. Mr. Romero? Yes, if I might, just um, to announce to the jury that there was a, a number of other exhibits put in to evidence. Um, I'm not going to go through them all just to identify them because we'll be talking to them about it in closing, but a number of photographs, uh, I believe it's number 30 through 38, and there's potential of a 39. Yes. Um, and then some <coughs> other judicial notice matters concerning weather that we'll address with the court. But with all that in mind and now being entered into evidence, the defense would rest. Thank you very much. Does the state have any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. Call Adam Pollock. Yes, it's a different day. Thank you for asking. Please. Because I'm sorry from your testimony, these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got it. Yes, I do. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Pollock, just to remind the jury, you were uh, the defendant's trainer at Cocapelli's Gym, is that right? Yes, sir. And are you now marketing the training that you gave to George Zimmerman on your website? I'm sorry? Are you now marketing the training that you gave to George Zimmerman on your website? Absolutely not. No. Nope. What's actually going on on that? I object, Your Honor, if I might. That is improper rebuttal testimony, seemingly impeachment. Okay. Well, we need to have argument about that. Approach the bench.
continue this matter outside the presence of the jury. I'm sorry about that, but if you'll please put your notepads face down, follow the deputy back into the jury room. Please be seated. Mr. Pollock, you're still on the witness stand. We're taking a 15-minute recess. You're not to discuss this case with anybody, including the lawyers. And if you'll please wait outside, we'll be with you when we reconvene. Thank you very much. Court is in recess for 15 minutes.